All right, here is a problem. Because sometimes you have to do integration by parts twice. Okay, and I'm going to show you this one in particular. See how we have a polynomial? When you have a polynomial, you can do the shortcut. And what you're going to do is you're going to write down, so you, you, know, you start with a polynomial as the thing you're going to keep taking the derivative of. So I'm going to start with x squared, and then I have the e to the x dx, which is what I'm going to take the integral of. Okay. So what you do is you take the derivative of this of this u. So remember, here's the u, here's the v dv. I didn't write I didn't write the uh, the dx, but what you do is what am I supposed to write here? U. I'm going to take the derivative of this until I get down to zero. Okay, and then I'm going to take the integral of this until I line them up and get the same number of terms. Okay, so that's the first part. I'm going to draw a line, kitty corner like that, and I start with a positive, I make it negative, start with a positive, and then I'm done. And then to get your integral, you just multiply across keeping those signs. So the integral is going to be x squared e to the x positive minus 2x e to the x plus 2 e to the x plus c. This is called tabular integration. It only works when you have a polynomial that you're starting with. It really works handy when you have a larger power. I, if I had something like x cubed minus 4x uh, times e to the x, okay, that would be something I would want to use tabular integration with. Okay, um, the, the next problem we're going to do won't work for tabular integration. Okay, for this one there's no polynomial. Okay, so what we're going to do is remember, we're going to think about Lippitt here. That hasn't gone away. I am going to use an exponential before I'm going to use a trig for u. So e to the x sine x dx. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate it, uh, differentiate it, e to the x dx. What is that? Negative cosine x. So what is this integral equal to? Well, they're telling us. I'm going to write down here because I don't think I can squeeze all my writing in there. So I'm going to write e, negative e to the x cosine x minus the integral of negative e to the x cosine x dx. I see a negative negative. I can make that positive. Okay. So then, same thing, we still have a nasty integral, not much different from what we started with. So e to the x is u, cosine x dx is dv, take the derivative e to the x dx. I'm going to start singing to you guys shortly here. Alright, so then this is, so I've got this negative e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x minus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. Now here's the trick. Do you see how this side is equal, how this part right here is equal to our original integral? So because that's true, those are like like terms. We can add this integral to both sides of this equation dx plus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. Sorry about the scrawl. But what that gives me two of those integrals. Which means I can divide both sides by two. So this is all over 2, and that is the integral.
of that function. Nasty. This is as bad as uh, this is as bad as integration by parts gets. Well, in Calc 2, you might have to do it three, four times, but really, that's what they make Wolfram Alpha for. If you get trend drift. All right. So here, here is a here is a nasty problem that I figured I wanted to do for you. Uh, you didn't do too many of these power reducing uh, in uh, identities last year, so I'm going to give this to you. And I'm not going to ask you to do too many of this. But what you want to do is to break this down to make it something that's manageable that we can, we, that we can work on. I'm just going to replace this with that and I'm also going to write it as one half minus one half times cosine 2x dx. Okay and then because this is an integral I can use all those integral rules one half dx minus one half times the integral of cosine 2x dx. Okay the antiderivative of one half is one half x the antiderivative of cosine 2x, well, if you think about it, you could do a u substitution there. Um, you were doing this without that process. So I'm seeing u equals 2x, du equals 2dx, so 1 half du equals dx. So you couldn't think of this as, I've got this 1 half and this 1 half, that's minus 1 fourth of the integral of cosine u du, right? So if we anti-differentiate that, we're going to get negative one-fourth. Uh, so I'm, I'm bound to determine the right sign. So one-half x minus one-fourth cosine, and u is 2x plus c. Okay, so that that is a that is a miserable one. Now this one's not so bad. It says it's a tougher one, but because this is does have a polynomial, this might be a candidate to use tabular integration. So x squared, two x, two zero. I've got cosine 4x. Well, I'm hoping you, you caught on enough that this is going to be 1 fourth sine 4x because if you were to take the derivative of 1 fourth sine 4x, that would give you 1 fourth times the cosine of 4x times the derivative of, of the 4x, which is 4. The 4s cancel out. That's what you have, right? So that's all I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply this fraction by 4 each time, or, or 1 over 4. That's 1 over 16 cosine 4x, and of course I need to stick a negative sign here. And then I'm going to get ne negative 1 over 64 sine of 4x. So I've got the lines matched up. Draw those kitty corner diagonal lines. Go plus, minus, plus. And then you just write those products. So I'm going to get 1 fourth x squared sine 4x. And then I've got a minus a minus. So that's going to be plus and 2 times 1 16th is 1 eighth x cosine 4x. And then a plus times a negative is a negative. So minus and 2 times 1 64th is 1 over 32 sine 4x plus c and that is one long honking integral okay a lot of work to find an area and that's all the examples so now all you better do is work on the homework